Welcome everyone to our episode 24 of Drops of Wisdom. In today's section, we are going to discuss the book Start with Why by Simon Sinek. And we are going to talk about connecting with your why as a person, as an individual, and start to reflect upon your life and the decisions that you are taking every day. Our lives are not just defined by the success, material wealth, or society recognition. They are more driven by the inner meaning, purpose, and connection that you have cultivated with your own values, feelings, and way to express your unique talents. Hence, what do you do in your life directly reflects the way you know, love, and appreciate your sparks of creativity and craftsmanship that you use in your work. There is a famous story about a group of American automobile manufacturers who visited Japan to inspect the country's car plants. The assembly lines they saw were pretty much the same as those in their own factories. But there was one notable difference. In the United States, a line worker used a rubber mallet to tap the edges of car doors to ensure they fit. In Japan, this job didn't seem to exist. When American executive asked how these plants manage without this position, their Japanese guide smiled shiplessly and explain that we make sure it fits when we design the door. The key message here is success is the fruit of design, not of short-term patches. Unlike their American counterparts, Japanese car makers weren't looking at a problem and attempting to figure out a makeshift solution. They were engineering the outcome they wanted from the get-go. This has a couple of obvious benefits. First off, a well-designed door is likely to both last longer and be more structurally sound in an accident. Secondly, if you design the door correctly, you don't need to buy mallets or hire workers to wield them. That eliminates a lot of waste and saves a lot of money, time and hassle. And if you think about this um, story in the book and you relate it to your life, what happens with your health? Many times in your life you take the shortcut you take the pill, you inject yourself with something because you are looking for the quick fix, because you are trying to take those uh, fast solutions to your health to shut down the symptoms. But what you are doing is that you are shutting down one symptom for a short period of time and uncovering a lot more in the short, in the halfway or long term uh, time in your life, because you are going to have a lot of uh, side effects due to the abuse of these medications that you are just taking as if they were candy, and because you are lazy to do what you know what you have to do, that is eating better and doing exercise. So you are trying to save time by buying the pills or buying the shots or doing whatever to alleviate your health momentarily, but you are damaging your long-term health and you are creating epigenetic marks that are going to lead to chronic diseases in, uh, in not so much time because that's what we are seeing now. Those trends of 
amazing peaks of chronic diseases, including mental diseases, because exercise and having a different kind of um, food habits is also impacting your mental health. But that's not how things work in terms of companies also. Let's go back to the setting of the companies now. In many organizations and in many, for example, American car makers, they were doing with those mallets the metaphor for the way which many companies around the world are left faced with a result that doesn't match up with the original plan. So the leaders often turn to perfectly effective short-term patches to achieve their goals. So they are shutting fires, as we say. They are constantly working or overworking time just to do the work that didn't come out as the original plan because they were not compromised, because they didn't know what they had to do in the beginning of it. So this might keep things chugging along, building up, but that's not the best approach. The most successful organizations don't need mallets. They build products and companies according to a blueprint. Put it differently, they make things fit by design, not by default, not by mistake. When you get down to it, for example, another company, Apple is just another example. Like Dell, HP or Toshiba, they do or they perform the work well and they sell good computers. They, wa they have equal access to talent, media channels to publicize their assets, their things, their products. And rationally speaking, it doesn't matter which company's product you choose. They are all pretty decent, but that's not how it works. In the real world, these folks of Apple, they pay more for the clients. They pay more for Apple devices and stand in line for hours for the latest iPhone, iPad or whatever the product is. Why do they do that? The key message here is companies, companies like Apple don't just sell products. They affirm their customers' beliefs and values. They care for the client. Here is one way Apple is different. Unlike its rivals, it's associated with a single product category. This is unusual for other companies. Typically, you would expect customers to buy their computers from one company and their cell phones from another and the tablets from another. So Apple has been hugely successful in creating an ecosystem in all those categories. There is a good reason for that. The why matters more than the what. Let's break it down now. Most organizations have a straightforward pitch. They describe what they do, state why they are better than their competitors and wrap things up with a call to action. If Apple were like most other companies, its pitch would be simple. We make great computers, they are beautifully designed and user-friendly, do you want to buy one? But that's not what Apple says. Here is the actual message, the pitch that has made it one of the most successful companies of all time. Everything we do is about challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently, and they are doing it. We prove this by making beautifully user-friendly products. Oh, and we also happen to make great computers, by the way. Do you want to buy one? You notice the difference? They are making you valuable. They are caring for your opinion. They are thinking about you when designing the things. There's no manipulation or free stuff so that you can buy one. In fact, the emphasis isn't, a ra isn't really on the product at all. Apple is telling us what it makes and is telling us why it does what it does. Here is a tricky question. 
why do you love your partner? Often, people will say something like, well, I don't know, she's funny and smart. But there are millions and billions of funny and smart people out there with whom we don't want to share our lives. So these aren't the real reasons we fall in love. They are attempts to describe something that is virtually undescribable. This is the key message here. Our rational brain doesn't control our decisions. If you look at a cross section of the human brain, you will see three areas. On the outside is the most recently evolved part, the neocortex. This is the responsible for rational thought and language. The two middle sections make up the limbic brain, and these are responsible for feelings like loyalty and trust, as well as decision making. Crucially, these older areas lack the capacity for language. That's why it's so hard to describe why you love someone. It also explains why companies fail to connect with customers because you are not approaching the emotions. You are approaching the description of a product and that's not what connects with people. So the main quote and the message of the book is people can process vast amounts of complex information but information isn't what drives behavior. If you want to change behavior, you need to access the emotional or limbic brain. So in terms of your life, how do you design this perfect or golden circle that Simon Sinek speaks about? Well, you need to have your why, your purpose in life. You need to connect with that mostly every day and you need to ensure that you are really emotionally committed. Now it comes the how. And it doesn't matter if the how is not all lined up and you have the whole picture set up. You just need to do certain um, split divisions on the bigger goal. The design that you want to achieve. The final outcome that you are looking for. If we talk about the example of health and we take that as the description, if you want to be healthy, isn't that better and easier to start eating different, to start sleeping well, to start doing exercise so that you can start changing the chemistry inside of you, having more energy, having motivation, and start losing weight and also your emotions will change so that's the long-term result that's how you want to look how you want to be and you can even set up more specific goals if you want but the, the, the thing here is how are you going to achieve that and it's not overwhelming yourself about that goal is just splitting things in very, very small amounts so that you really can do it and you really can commit to what you are doing. So start by shifting simple things in the way you eat, taking away the things that you know that are hurting you in terms of the health and start doing some exercise around the week so that you start giving your body that stamina, that compromise, and that power of motivation that you need to start doing it more habitually. So that's the way we create these circles of becoming more empowered with finding our why, with compromising emotionally with why we are doing the things that we do, and finding a real purpose that doesn't have to be just one and finding the meaning in our lives. I hope that this message has resonated with you. If you like it, 
If you think that people can benefit from it, just help me to share it. And if you want, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel that I'm going to link below in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention. We will listen to each other next Wednesday. Bye.